splitting, it rained The sound of the fire and the splitting of particles It faded to a gentle pitter-patter The final word of sand, the final battle axe Thrown a gentle mist rose Find the last touch of light Screamed by the clouds, the petals of the pen Gunfire, melancholy man, that he stride across the earth with all the dignity like an ape like him truly deserves. That born in his hand is the vision illuminated. Why he chooses mendaciousness is his own private lie, his own little truth. Who he has killed for is a matter of indifference. It is what he has killed for, and under a mask of sorrow, we always find in man that unlovable hardness of intent, that murderer with no motive. Normality is the movement through time of sameness in culture and heredity, nurture and nature. The sameness is no particular sameness, but a general sameness, an existing, pre-existing, and re-existing of values and physicality. What we mean when we say against the herd is not the same as being against normality. Normality itself is in keeping with it against the herd. Not to say it is an individuality, but in the nature of becoming a man, a woman, an artist, that is normal, the herd being so big, what now are its limits, that all the against within it, all the man against the worlds are of its nature, necessitated by evolution, that we have a goal, this is only possible if all the me's have theirs, the selfless member of the herd could not come into existence, one would always die if they were for the herd. conforms to normative traits as it is demanded of his natural instinct to art. All art wants to sell to the eye that life is affirmed and worth repeating. Everything beyond this is mere idea. The good artist does not have ideas, because he has his art. One is confronted with the phenomena he is trying to express in let replica, imitation, whatever form it may take. It takes after, an initial actuality. Without art we would not understand life. Our ideas would not suffice. And if they did, it would only be to us as individuals and not as a whole. One brings understanding to the herd by art, but one understands himself, he can only keep that to himself. We know what the brain wants, it wants comfort, but should we, the mind, let it have that? What is the most comfortable, normality, ignorance, herd? The for surest way to comfort the brain is to return to something formerly repeated. The present absurdity is abolished by this, at least consciously. You don't imagine, as a man, a pure or even proximate version of a person, for a person is defined by the conflict you have with them, and not with the motives apart from you, the person in himself. The problem with estimating normality is concrete and unmovable. By one's action, the knowing cannot be known. If by chance one had guessed the knowing, it would only be some insuspecific and non-representative item. To do what is normal, how can we judge this instant? One does not do something because it is normal, 
They do what is normal unless they do something. Forgetting is a greater force than the normal. We can, after all, forget completely the normality and live for an eye that is not fixed on existence. We come to think of the normal with values already assigned otherwise, and having nothing left for normality, hardly see how it could have any value. But in life we are not for the greater part concerned with thinking and doing anything of a difference to what others are and were thinking and doing, but differences are possible. In matters in which tastes predominate, like music, painting, and writing, one's against is much more pronounced than one's for. At root this is a hatred for the enemy's art and complacency towards one's own. There is so much in us that is warrior, the imitation of which is secondary. The artist is only a byproduct of the warrior. Another suffering should not affect one. That the relation one has to life changes to that of the sufferer is undoubted, though. But just as a nightmare, we pass with quiet ease back into our own relation to life. There's nothing really to alarm us. Change is mostly momentary, like the thoughts in a distant gaze. Many probably died as if to say, to protect them I must die, and now it is a priori but we don't act on it. If the situation arises when we don't have time to think, the action shows itself. Our heroes are this very showing of the past. To die for others is our ancestry, but not our future. When we learn more what death is, we will not die for an end that we won't see accomplished. In trying to see what is true, we deal with many mistakes. It is from the nature of mistakes, that is, making mistakes, being mistaken, that the notion of trying to see what is true comes to be. Sentiments of one's country, of one's wife, of one's self, are misplaced. One no longer loves the herd, the tribe, but that is the root of all love. Ancient herbs and tri tribes had no love of geographical spousal or inward nature. Love was our working as a unit. The emergence of nation states, marriage, and the individual in our recent history have confused our allegiance to herd or tribe. We have been reduced to family and friend, but it is not the same as living the herd or tribe life we are used to. Something in us wants to gather everyone we know into one place. Indeed, that is the conception of heaven for many people. You think and feel without words in a complexity that cannot be described by words. Liars and writers have yet to hit on this problem with sufficient strength. Everything they give us sounds as a lie does. Every story clear that it is a story. It is as if it is a given already that everything is lies and stories, and we can discount someone before they even say anything. <laughs>